Listeners be advised. The Holiloquy podcast discuss matters related to the human experience and many that are sexual in nature. Due to this, some conversations may surround triggering topics such as sexual violence, self-harm, abuse, and much more. Please be advised, a list of crisis and psychological resources will be available in the show notes of this episode. With that said, let's get started with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please as we go through the following safety instructions. In the event that there is a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen mask will drop from the overhead. Place the mask over your nose and mouth breathe normally as oxygen is flowing even if the mask is not be sure to adjust your own mask. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Whole Little Food Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. This is your favorite host, Ernest G. Scott, also known as Flaker Jackson, and for you freaking motherfuckers out there, Sebastian Zaggins. On today's episode, we will be talking about virginity shame. And with me, I have Adrian, her roommate Warren, as yes. well as Fortis, and Tyrell. So, um, well, like I said, we will t- be talking about virginity shame. So it's like, what fuels this need to shame other people will probably be something that we'll be talking about. Uh, we'll probably uh, what our first experiences was like, uh, non-traumatic, uh, because this is November and with November, I try to make sure that we keep a positive vibe and not necessarily deal with the traumatic experiences because those are conversations that happen um, throughout the remainder of um, the Hobo Loopy podcast. And this is just a, a month of just all the positive things. So uh, when if we do start talking about the um, like first experiences, let's go with the first positive experience that you engaged in when it came to your sexual, uh, sexual encounters and all those other good things. So uh, just wanted to put that out there because I even know from my past with my uh, history of whatever traumatic experiences I've ex- uh, had, um, but that's not the conversation of November. So uh, even if we're going to talk about my first experience, I will only talk about my first wonderful experience that was great too, that I consider you to my virginity. So virginity shame. Um, and like I said, that's the first thing that we'll be talking about. When did you lose your virginity? And again, uh, I have to start the conversation off. Uh, I lost mine when I was 19 years old. Uh, I was in college. Uh, I was away on fall break. And I was just at a moment when I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I, I'm tired of the pressure that I'm putting myself to engage in sex, to like explore this. And I was like, you know what? Let me download this app. Uh, well, I already had an app on my phone, but let me actually have conversations with people, see who I feel comfortable with, even inform them that, hey, if we do have sex, this will be my first time. Um, uh, hoping that the person that's on the other end was going to be patient with me, but I just um, automatically had that need of comfort and safety and security before I even wanted to pursue that um, that chance with them. We talked about condoms. We talked about um, where we'll be having sex. Um, my level of comfort. Are we going to continue to have conversations as the process goes? Uh, in the great benefit of my first experience is that the person that I had sex with uh, was very communicative. They um, provided a space for us to get comfortable with knowing each other. Um, we chatted for about an hour and then we you know, did the do. Uh, and I lost my virginity on trampoline, which was great. Now, yes, I did. I, I sure, I sure did. <laughs> You are a fun bitch. <laughs> <laughs> You're just living. I'm just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Wow. Transition from the uh, trampoline to uh, the back porch. So, oh, it was, yeah. So, yeah. anybody walked outside, they would have seen burning out here fucking. So, 
Look at God. I'm good. <laughs> Dr. Scott. Y'all need that baby? He's burning. No, he's been food. <laughs> he's out here living for y'all babies. There. Look, if you need the whole story to tell your friends, feel free to steal mine. <laughs> feel free. I, look, I'm not going to say it's me. No, it's you, boo. I love it for you. Enjoy it. Uh, who else would like to share their story? So, I guess I'll start. Um... So I lost my virginity to women. See, I don't like to say love. See, I'm not. This pussy is a prize. Yeah. So I gave my virginity to a woman, a white woman. I know. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> y'all didn't see that coming. That was a <laughs> Let me explain how that happened, guys. I gave my virginity to a white woman because I, that was all I was around. Like, I was in private school. Now she explained it was a lot of niggas, right? It was one other black girl, and she loved the Lord. So I wouldn't get in the box. She said, I, y'all are not still in my black car today. I'm going to explain everything in great detail. to <laughs> explain it. Because we all know how I feel. <laughs> but yes, um, it was super cute, super magical. Like, it was everything. Actually, it was nothing that I thought it would be, and but what it was was like super awesome. We ended up; she was actually actually became my girlfriend. We dated for two years, um, so freshman year to junior year, wow. um, and then I gave my virginity to a man, my actual medical physical hymen <laughs> to a man um, when I was eighteen. On prom. Yes, I was 18 years old. I was so beautiful. I had this like banging red dress on. Had, you know, working, you know, this was back when I was young. So the body was snatched, you hear me? And um, the guy that I gave it to was actually my mom's best friend's son. And unbeknownst to me, he had been checking for me since well, we grew up together. So he had a thing for me since, I think he said, since I was like 10. And he's two years older than me. So he was 12 when we met, I was 10. And, you know, our, as our moms got closer, you know, your mama got a friend, you friends with the kid because y'all don't get around each other. And I always thought he was handsome, but I just, my self-esteem wasn't there um, from other traumas from my daddy raggy ass family. So I didn't know that I was a little cutie, right? So in my, it was like, when he actually told me like, I like you and I want to date you. And I talked to your mama, she said, we could talk, we can, you know, we can date. It was just like, what? Like, this world is for me as well. And that was, like, really, really fulfilling. Um, it actually helped me. That was, like, the beginning of my self-awareness journey as to I am not what my father's family said I was. I actually have value. I am beautiful. I am sweet. I do deserve love. So him, me giving him my virginity was kind of like a validation process for me as a person. Now, I know you're not supposed to find your validation outside of yourself. However, that's what that did. Um, but like you said, when, you know, we went to prom and, you know, we had a good time, we danced, we took photos, et cetera. And then, you know, it came to the point where he's going to take me home. And he was like, so, you know, like, I like you, you like me, you know, get made out, get done over the clothes stuff. You know, I'm late with the dick. You know? Punch him. Uh, it wasn't like girthy, but it was long. So his wiener was intimidating because, again, as no wiener having bitch, like it was like all of that in this box. Um, but um, when he asked, like, do you want to take that step? I was like, if I'm gonna take that step, I would want to take it with no one but you. And so he talked to me and like we kissed. And he was really gentle, and I was like, what if I bleed? He was like, that's okay. Like. It's, it's us. And uh, one thing that he did is remember y'all, Dick was, Dick was dicking and I was real scared of that dick because, not because it wasn't dick, but because it was some <laughs> I was I was like, you can't just come out the gate going straight to the major leagues. Like I'm not Michael Jordan and I need to be developed. I need to be, you know, trained or whatever. But him being a seasoned dick giver, he, he did the right things. He ate me out. He got me very aroused. Like, when I tell you puddles, puddles. Like, <laughs> Gucci was ready. Like, yeah. by, the time, by the time he put it in, I wanted nothing more than to get it. So the fear went out the window and the hole came inside. And, it's, <laughs> <laughs> and so did he. But we wore it, we used the condom. So no babies in this puss. But um, he was very gentle, very tender, very loving. 
And it was honestly, like, I know it sounds so cliche, but it was the most magical night of my life. <laughs> yes. And then after we, you know, broke the barrier or whatever and had the first time, we got crazy. Like, I became that girl for him, um, which is different because it kind of set the bar way high for niggas because the next nigga I had sex with, Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so disappointed. <laughs> there was no Dion. There was there was no rhythm. It was just a bunch of just it was a mess. Like it was very I was, this ain't this ain't that. Like ugh. so he, he definitely set the bar very high. <laughs> Um, Vernon is laughing because it was his roommate. No, so that's who it was. I just said freshman year. Bitch just says roommate. Now, in front of the Easter egg. Oh, God. Hey, Dustin. Oh, my God. Not the actual name. Jesus. No, it's not. Oh, what you didn't do. You know. Dustin, if you're listening to this podcast, I'm, I'm sorry, Bill. You, you you can pop, lock, and drop it, so. You know, you, oh, you can explain yeah. something, Dustin. That's how you got me. Cause I was like, ooh, and he can dance. He can fuck. No, no. The data does not reflect that. <laughs> but bless you, Dustin. I hope you found somebody. Um, but yes, so my first times were actually both very magical in their own rights, in their own sense. So it was awesome. But I like to say, like I noticed you said when you were telling us about yours, you felt pressure to, you know, go ahead and do it, get it over with, blah, blah, blah. And I think. I did not feel that frustrated. And I really think it comes down to our genders. You were being perceived as a cisgender male at the time, and me being perceived as a cisgender female, what do they do to females when they do to males? They expect you to be out here dropping dick off like UPS. They expect me to keep a pussy under lock and key. So I never felt pressure to give it up. I actually felt shame that I wanted to give it up because as a woman, I'm not supposed to like sex, I guess. (laughs) So, I, that was where <laughs> we had the reverse struggle. You were you were pressured to give it up. I was pressured to keep it to the family. But I didn't want to. Does that make me a whore? Maybe, bitch. And if it does, that's why I'm so good at it now. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I find that interesting that, you know, I like that part of your story, like how um, you felt what you felt and I felt what I felt. It's all because society told us that's what we should be feeling. Yeah. When in all actuality, we should have just got our rocks off. Exactly. I <laughs> my uh, experience of, of losing mine, I literally went from zero to 10 with my body count within six months. Yeah, yeah my house was look, And the, the, the thing about that is that uh, after I got to that point, <laughs> I decided, let me do some reflection because this is not you. This is not me. This yeah. is not who I thought I would be as a sexual being. Mm-hmm. Um, so I took a break and I reflected on what is the cause of this? Why am I having this behavior? Which is also the thing that brought me to my journey of self-care my, uh, and brought me back to loving myself once again, because I realized, oh, look, I already had sex. Granted, the first experience was great, but I also realized that I was validating my beauty by having sex with other people mm-hmm. in order to maintain that, oh, other people really do find me as attractive as I thought I was as I knew myself as being but you know um, being on these apps and having people like um, talk bad about you or even just the uh, idea of seeing no fast no film no old people on a regular basis just made me feel a lot more self-conscious so it's like okay what can I find what nugget exists for me and I need to uh, hold on to that nugget and um, like Cultivate the nugget. Yeah, cultivate that nugget so that I can feel that love ongoing or I can feel that appreciation for my looks, my body, and all of that. But when I took that break and realized all these things, I just reframed a lot of my identity and my relationship with sex. And that's also which what, uh, what kind of burped my desire to even write that book mm-hmm. is by taking that break and recognizing, oh, this is the thing that happened to me. Like, I even know that some of that was rooted in the childhood traumas that we're not digging into today, but it's just acknowledging that and knowing that this is the thing that's impacting me. This is the thing that's um, weighing on the conversations I have with other people, the, um, the way I express myself. Uh, like and just 
You know, it, it just weighed so much on me that I, I like having that moment to just release that energy, release that that hold that those past traumas had on me, just did a lot of great things for me. Uh, it opened some new doors, it opened some new experiences, it opened new ways of loving myself that I didn't even think I even I could have. So it's like, yeah. I like the you that you are. Like I, I didn't meet you at the beginning of the process. I met you probably around college, you were just starting to walk into mm-hmm. who you are now. And I was always instantly drawn to you, like your energy, so like you just you're just so great. So, like, I love you. <laughs> and like, it's, but over, as knowing you over the time that I have known you, I've seen you develop and grow. And really, like, I model my confidence off of you. Like, I watch how you live and interact with the world. And I'm just like, if Vernon can do it, I can do it. If Vernon can love himself, I can love myself. And it's just like, I tell you from time to time. Oh, shit. We could have, that's good energy. That's how you know. <laughs> that's the spirit. That's the energy, guys. All the time, King. Like I count it a privilege to know you, to love you, and be loved by you, to be your friend. Like that's one of the greatest accomplishments of my life. So not only did you do that journey for you, you did it for me too. And for all of the whole we've been, you know, burning walk so that we could run, and we're all gonna have sex together. Okay, you. Um, you know, live events, we can start. Wow. <laughs> oh, now she got me. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Okay, I love I you. To share that. Um, while I get my tears and stuff going over here in the background, um, please have a super good job about to uh, share about your first time, what have you. Sure. Um, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Cordelia. No, no, you go first. No, you go first. Um, so, so I actually lost my virginity at 25. Um, so it, that in 20, it was January, 2019. Cause I remember the month. It was like a little bit after new year's and before the pandemic? Ooh. yeah. Wow. So, mm-hmm. and yeah, so just in case, obviously all for audience that don't know, I'm a same gender loving man. And the reason why I chose to wait was for several reasons. One, I never really had like a proper sex education growing up. So the only thing that was talked about in school regarding sex was like when we were in health class and pretty much we learned the biology of sex and basically they showed a whole bunch of slides about STDs. Like that was really like the extent to what they talked about sex. So. I didn't necessarily know that sex was about pleasure growing up. I really connotated sex to be something that like adults did. And I always knew kind of like there was like a seriousness of it because I didn't even, I wasn't even in the mind frame of thinking about, uh, you know, you know, same sex attraction or anything like that. I strictly thought about sex in the nature of, okay, if I had sex, you know, obviously I was thinking in the mindset of with a woman that, you know, what happens if she gets pregnant, you know, and just, you know, all these kind of, you know, tradition, you know, kind of like traditional things. So for me, growing up, sex was never like a connotation about pleasure. It was about basically like reproduction and knowing that, and this was coming before I knew I had like a same, you know, gender attraction. Um, But yeah, so I didn't date in high school. Um, I actually did not even engage in self-pleasure for myself until I actually got to my first year of college. Um, so I had a lot of latent, latent, what you would think of latent development when it comes to expression of sex and sexuality. And so, yeah, my first time, uh, was with a, um, a very good friend that I still have. Um, I knew that I did not want to be in a relationship when I did have sex for the first time. I didn't think of myself as a relationship person. I am um, a poly person, but this was before I knew anything about poly or anything regarding, I just thought of you know, relationships is just like a one, a one minded thing. So because I didn't want that, I kind of just, you know, refrained from it. And so eventually when I got to that place, um, I met a great, you know, great friend. And so as I was talking to him about, you know, some of my fears and my anxieties and things like that, he was like, well, you know, if you come to that point where, you know, you want to, you know, obviously, you know, have sex, you know, like, you know, he was willing to, you know, obviously to do it. And the thing is, I think my, my set not necessarily criteria but 
I knew I wanted my first time to be with somebody who I considered to be a close friend because I've always valued the nature of friendship. And two, I did not want to have any regrets. I used to hear stories a lot of time about when, about, you know, people who would sleep with people and they regret it. And so even though I wasn't in like a love or relationship mindset, I was just like, well, no, I, I definitely don't want that for myself. I don't want to be in a situation where it's like I sleep with some, you know, I have sex with somebody that I regret, you know, that I regret, you know. So those were like my two stipulations had to be, you know, wanted to be a close friend and something that I didn't regret. And I, I had both of, and I had both of that. And so, yeah, my first time was very nice, um, you know, very, you know, he was very patient, um, you know, and yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a good experience overall. And I will say, like, I had the same experience, same sexual education. You know, it wasn't about, it's not pleasure focused. They preach abstinence mm -hmm. over everything and they do yeah. not even touch on same sex relations. And so mm -hmm. for, even though my virginity, I lost to women first, you know, I was really just winging it. Like I had no <laughs> idea what the fuck I was doing. I was just touching shit and seeing what felt good. Um, and so yeah. I totally uh, feel for you on that side. Sex education, to, to, to become a more sex positive culture, we gotta start at the fundamentals. Um, yeah. Sex ed now should include, I mean, LGBTQIA plus alphabet gang, like we out here. So we need to go ahead and revise that curriculum to include that. Because it's not just straight right. people like you fucking. We fuck too. And we need to know the dangers. We need to know the precautions. We need to know the procedures. Sure. We need to have ideas, you know, to make yeah. educated decisions on how we share our bodies. And they really need yeah. to incorporate fetishes and certain other little stuff. I think we should not fetish fetish as far as just like little fetishes, like that main fetish, which is the foot. I'm telling you, because the foot is the mechanism to your whole body for real. And that's a deep situation and i found that out personally i found that out spiritually and that's really deep you gotta be careful how you touch certain parts of the body and stuff so that's sex education mm -hmm. people don't realize that their feet you touch some, a certain part of a person's feet it make you get erect it will make your chest breathe it open up your chest your neck so you have to be careful how your energy is when you're touching certain parts of the body especially the feet you have to be careful who touch your feet because your feet is your foundation to your whole body your feet give up your body is gone mm -hmm. i touch somebody's feet they got hard and nothing on themselves in two seconds ten seconds like mm -hmm. well, like shame and take my shoe so off. sex education <laughs> is important <laughs> more and more than just what people traditionally think so it's really deep yeah yeah, yeah definitely i will definitely. Um, i will add well in terms of like kinks and fetishes that i will say that will have to be one of those things that's reserved for like yeah, yeah. With that. So we, uh, even like mm -hmm. you're graduating here's a packet of what you <laughs> learned about kids the only reason why i say that is because one already having those conversations about consent is one of the things like yeah. comprehensive sex ed that's one of the things that people will learn at a very young age so they will understand bad touch good touch and understand their body their anatomy and all those other great things which you need it but when you start to bring in the kinks and all of these other things, because um, the kink spectrum is so very wide, the yeah. fetish spectrum but is so like, very wide. I screw what I said too, because that is for more of another subject in a sense, but the foot fetish is not supposed to be considered a fetish. It's really, really sex, honestly. You know, and I want that to be said, that that's sex. That's outside of me. That's outside, that's the truth. And I don't want it to seem like that's just a fetish. That's really sex. So that just kind of just goes into sex education. Well, outside of the fetish. Engaging in the feet does have its sexual components, but it still doesn't disqualify the fetish and kink side of it. So well, like, it's nothing that's still is a fetish. It's a more of a, to the, you know, of a kink or something. That's something different. That's armpits all that stuff is different stuff pits like all this crazy stuff like that those are kind of crazy like, not crazy but some of that stuff really is just what it is but like those are different things mm -hmm. the foot is, is really sex but it's certain parts of the body that triggers you in a whole way that a lot of stuff don't even do yeah like 
the thing is like when it comes to the or any other part of your body like you can have a, you can have an orgasm from nipple play yeah so it, it's it's still considered sex on a level but there's still the kink and fetish side of those mm -hmm. yes you're engaging with the person and you're enjoying the um the feels with the person in the sexual experience but there's uh, it doesn't disqualify or delete the kink and fetish side of it mm -hmm. so yeah you can learn about feet and how feet can contribute to pleasure the same way you can learn about that and uh, when it comes to nipples and other parts of your body but if you're going to indulge in the kink and fetish side of things that is something that is one something that you have to um, do self-exploration about because not every single kink is going to fit every single person and not every fetish is going to fit every single person and some people may get a traumatic response after seeing certain types of um, play. Yeah. And to limit that, it's better to have that, like I said, give them a packet and say, explore and enjoy, yeah. rather than having that something that's for we'll yeah, sexual action. And if you're not talking about that, then a certain situation, what's the difference? I, I will that's say, I, I came to the kink and fetish size. I came to the kink and fetish side as an adult. Vernon was actually my Sherpa through that journey. And I was overwhelmed. Like I had always been curious about, you know, BDSM and kinks and fetishes, but I was too scared to even attempt to begin the process of learning because it's so overwhelming. Like Vernon mentioned, it's a very broad spectrum and everything is not for everybody. I thought BDSM was demonic as fuck because that's what I was told. But Vernon actually was the one and this uh, Easter egg babies. TT, y'all remember the schedule? Y'all remember the episode? We had our kinks where I took the, uh, the BDSM battery. Vernon is the one that taught me that BDSM is actually the most... Um, consented form of sex because you have to trust and you have to go over hard stops you know soft stops green light whatever the safe word is what we doing what we're not doing and to be not violated but to be dominated or uh, someone sub you have to have trust and remember i don't feel safe coming out of my natural masculine aggressor mode unless i feel what safe so i learned at the bright, bright old age of 28, that BDSM is actually not demonic. It's actually something really beautiful. Now, would 18 year old Adrian be able to con conceptualize that? Hell no. Nah. Would 14 year old Adrian? And definitely not. Like, I would be probably telling my pastor that you're trying to do some demon shit. <laughs> so I think yeah. with education, you have to know when, when to introduce certain topics. Mm. So that's why I said, the feet and the fetish things, maybe not in the core curriculum of, you know, K through 12, but maybe collegiate or, you know, like Bernie said, take a packet because, you know, think about how we learn other subjects. We don't learn algebra at three years old. We learn the building block, building blocks of algebra from the time we're in, you know, kindergarten all the way up to ninth grade where they introduced it. We have to know numbers. We have to know integers. We have to know positives and negatives. We have to know the rules of numbers. We have to know that numbers and letters, you know, exist in math. We have to know that one side, what you do to one side, you do to the other side. We have to learn balance. We have to learn how to check our work. These are all things that build upon themselves as you grow and as you learn. So, and I know Tyrell can probably speak to this better as an educator. You don't want to overwhelm your pupil but you also don't want to 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 give them so little information that they cannot yeah, yeah. or make decisions or, or or walk in their uh maturity even you have to introduce the right amount at the right time yeah yeah right. and that's actually a personal goal of mine i hope to actually one day be a part of a actual a actual sex education curriculum mm -hmm. because i do believe like even though i don't work with kids i do believe like kids of certain like age sets like there is a way to talk about sex in a pleasurable and healthy <laughs> way with it being like crossing over you know too many lines and things like that and the reason why i think sex education is so uh you know it's just not there is because kids are very curious Mm -hmm. And they're very curious at very young ages. And so by the time I think adults or guardians are ready to broach these subjects, it's not to say that it's too late, but it's like, yeah, it's like, you know, your child was having like those feelings two years ago, mm -hmm. you know, like when it was happening. So, you know, the nature, and I think that that's coming back to the nature of the topic. That's where I think the nature of like this notion of virginity shaming comes from, because, you know, as you get to, you know, that preteen or teenage, 
uh, those teenage years, you know, you're having to battle with your mind, with your hormones, that being out of whack, you're still going through, uh, you know, puberty and development. And so a lot of things are just, you know, not uh, out of sync. And so, you know, when you start to question why certain things are certain things, you have to have resources and outlets to to help, you know, in facilitating that. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and just to uh, like top everything off, like like what I mentioned earlier with the conversation of consent, like whenever I have uh, have done workshops in the past or even in my book itself, uh, I mentioned that uh, if you were to in, indulge in sex and be under the influence of drugs or alcohol, how that's against consent, because legally that is definitely against You're consent. Intrigued. And uh, whenever I educate uh, most definitely college students about that, I will keep that um, that response only and do not even go into the keep food side of things because um, it, within that uh, age frame, uh, well, the age range, you have a lot more college students who are abusing drugs, who are abusing alcohol and all these other things. If you give them the permission to have sex on top of that, you will find a lot more sexual assaults that happen and a lot more uh, uncomfortable situations that they're, uh, they're in because of uh, their um, the way that our culture is set up, people will binge when they because they got a little bit of free, freedom that they have now. They're going to go crazy with it. Mm -hmm. So I don't tell people uh, whenever I educate them on consent at the first time that this is actually an option for you to do so. But whenever it comes to a later stage, or they're a lot older and they can understand the nuances of things, the difference, like the balances within it, in that the gray area, the color of the conversation, I'll let them. Oh, yeah, some people do enjoy having sex with drugs so people enjoy having sex with alcohol but when they do that they engage in those um situations with people that they trust so that's the thing that um maintains that level of consent you can't say that this person that you just met out of the blue knows your body they don't know when you're drunk they don't know when you're past your limit you just met them mm -hmm. so that's why it's important to gauge the level of the person um, before you just give them all the information. There's stages for people to become a lot more welcome to it because of a young person, anything could be icky. Mm -hmm. uh, if they haven't been exposed to it, that's some that's some nasty shit right there. How do you put that on? Even with um, like playing with feet. If you were to have a, uh, I have no problems in my life. Not for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I have very great finish sexual trash. No. In general, like, that's true. Yeah, so yeah. some people may find that out. That's not me. That's not me. I where they clean dirty. I don't like it. Some people, like, if they're introduced to knowing that that's a thing, their automatic response, like, who the fuck would do something like that? And that's, I, that's yeah, it. Like, I'm not a normal person, period, in general. So, you know, things that happen for me don't happen for everybody. And I'm finding it out after all these years. But, you know, I guess it all oh, it varies the way it varies. Yeah. yeah. So, but I would want to know off rip. Mm. With me, you gotta let me know right then and there if you're on it or you're not. Yeah. If you're not on it, you ain't on it. If you're on it, you're on it. And that's and I'm gonna know within five minutes. I'm gonna know in one minute. <laughs> I'm not gonna not know within the first minute of somebody. Yeah, and that's fair, and that's that's how you engage with the people that you want to engage. Yeah. With. and that's the thing. Like some people don't understand that there's a difference in how other people want to engage. That's why you have to have those conversations and also be trained to have those conversations. Because some people still can communicate. We're all on these apps, and we know people that's on these apps cannot talk. <laughs> they cannot have these conversations, and it takes building that skill because communication is a skill that you learn over time. Yeah, it's not something something that you just wake up to look all babies come out of the womb gaga gaga ga, ga. and then you have a point in their life when they can make a sentence they can be like mommy it hurt you know they can start communicating <laughs> like you you know it builds over time and that's the same thing with sex it's a skill so you have to unlock some certain things as you age yeah uh, and you can give somebody the blueprint at uh age 18 and they still won't know what to do with it because look some people have been out here fucking since they've been 14 and still don't know how to have good sex okay. so it's a skill mm -hmm. um now 
to go back on something that was talked about a little bit earlier, because uh, Adrian, when you brought up, you know, the pressures that people feel when it comes to losing uh, virginity. And yeah, there is that pressure um, in terms of like, guys, you have to hurry up and get that done and everything. How dare you not? Uh, how you be in high school and still be a virgin? What the fuck is wrong with you? That kind of shame that yeah. guys feel, yeah. you get. Or uh, then on the flip side for women, having that restriction saying that how dare you decide to be a sexual being knowing that you're a sexual being who said, you you know, <laughs> who said that you are given the opportunity for pleasure um, it, isn't it crazy how those conversations are happening simultaneously right. but when you think about it if they're happening simultaneously no one should be fucking exactly <laughs> exactly that's why i hate double standards exactly. it doesn't make sense <laughs> it does again if a guy, if a woman has to keep her legs closed and a guy's supposed to be fucking out, fucking everybody, who the fuck is a guy fucking other than other men? So why do y'all have problems with homosexuality? Come on. Come on. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> if a uh, uh, penis in the vagina is the only way for a woman to uh, lose her vagina, uh, no, her virginity, not lose her vagina, just take it <laughs> well, we severing whole body organs over here. But if, if that's the only way for a woman to lose her virginity, why are we upset with women engaged with other women? It doesn't make sense, and this is why double standards are ridiculous. See? <laughs> but anyways, back to the pressures. I think uh, in, uh, also something what uh, with Tyrell with how uh, late not necessarily late but when he chose to lose his virginity being later on than I can't say normal or typical people because people lose their virginity at different ages all the time but there's a certain pressure on how old you can be mm-hmm. to uh, lose your virginity like I remember the movie Forty Year Old Virgin <laughs> it seemed like such a big deal back then it seemed to kind of put a movie but it's really not. It never was. But, like, that was a good ass movie. It's very hilarious. But I think it was also problematic if you actually look at it today. But we're not going to talk about that. But, like, when you think about that and think about all the pressure that he felt just to experience his first time, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it is. And it was fine. Like, before they applied that pressure, he was totally happy doing what he did. It wasn't like he was longing to do it or wanted to do it. He he was just doing what made him happy. And then all of a sudden, now he gets this new exposure. They're like, you, you never, never? Aren't you like 40? Bro, what the fuck? Like, and now he has to catch up because he's behind. Me personally, I actually envy you, Tyrell, that you, when you decided to lose your virginity, you were completely in control. Not that I wasn't in control of mine, but you decided for yourself. Fuck what y'all got to say. I'm going to do this when I'm ready. And you weren't ready until you were ready. And when you did it, you were confident. You enjoyed yourself. Mm-hmm. And you you, you you have a better experience. It was. I imagine that you weren't just fumbling, bumbling in the dark. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you... You were in control of what was going on. Not that, not to say that I wasn't. I'm not saying that. But I like the control and the autonomy that you took on when you were going to do what you wanted to do. I I think that is so amazing. I commend you on that. If anyone ever tries to shame me for that, tell them to suck my big sloppy ass dick. And it's like, dude, I wish I would have waited to 20, 25. Probably 20, 20, 25. That was the age I would have probably wanted to weigh a little bit more. Mm-hmm. You know, like 20, 25. Yeah. I seem like I've lost my virginity 10 times. It seemed like... Well, <laughs> well, also, like, a caveat to my story really quickly is that I was also never really in, like, social situations, like, to have sex anyway, because, like, I was always just really, like, to myself. So I didn't, you know, want to be in a space to like meet people and things like that until I actually moved back um, mm-hmm. to Georgia and, and, you know, home, um, you know, because I was entering into like a new like uh, space. You know, there's a difference between when you live in a space, you know, as a kid and as a teenager versus like being an adult. So mm-hmm. I was trying to have a more adult relationship with being home. So, yeah, I was never really not to say that, you know, it was just because I chose not to have sex. It was just one of those things. I was never in social situations to even have sex to, you know, even begin with as well. So that's just me. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that plays a big part of so shit. Um, what? Ortiz. 
We forgot about 14. Yeah. 14. Yeah, Maybe talk to us. We went on a uh, wild ass tangent and everything. 14. How you going over there? Uh-huh. <laughs> so what is your what are some of the pressures that um you've seen or are aware of as it relates to you know losing one's virginity um with my personal experience is more so with the emphasis on having sex with a woman because for me growing up i knew i liked it i knew i liked the guys coming up even when at a young age mm-hmm. the only thing was because i was around family members that were homophobic I didn't get to explore myself until I was like age 23. And so basically I get I didn't explore my sexuality in the year 2020. But another thing that was that kind of hindered me was because I had suffered from social anxiety and also body dysmorphia because I suffered from weight loss at a teenage my teenage years and also depression. So oftentimes I didn't like meeting up with guys because I got along better with women in a sense. So it was always easy to develop a rapport with women more so with men even when I was born in teenage years. So that was another reason why I didn't have that sexual experience until the age of 23. And during that time, that's when I decided to explore my body more. And also that's when I started seeking out attention from men. So the way I did it was basically, I started posting my news on, let's see, it was on X2. That's where I started off at, on X2. And I had got a lot of comments from different guys. So, you know, I wanted to push it further. And so I decided to go on hookup sites such as Adam for Adam, then also to Grinder. So that was my life. <laughs> yeah. The ghetto. I want to be yeah. there so bad, but I don't got no dick. We'll talk about it Go ahead, 14. I'm sorry. No, yo, you good. But it was a very interesting experience because during my first encounter, sexual encounter, it was with a guy that was around my age. The only thing was, I didn't put much emphasis on my virginity, per so to speak, but I was putting a lot of emphasis on validation. Mm-hmm. So my way of speaking sex was seeking validation from men because of course, I always got attention from women, but never from men. So I was wondering aimlessly to just get sex from anybody, really and truly speaking. So I did lose to my virginity to a guy that was in the month of October that time. And it was fine. The sexual experience was okay. It was a little rough, but I consented to that. I would take accountability for that. But once again, that was my side of being intense. I wanted something intense. Now, I'm not going to lie to you now. Ain't no sex is nothing to play with because I was like, that was me just jumping into it. So, of course, I was just looking at porn and thought it was all gravy. But no, that shit hurt. (laughs) saying that because everybody that talks yeah. about anal they're just like oh yeah you just do it like you know you gotta relax and you know use loose like baby your anus is meant to be closed now again i'm not shaming those who enjoy anal pleasure i'm just speaking from a physiological standpoint yes auntie don't have a degree but she was pre-med in college stay with me and i'll bless you <laughs> your anus is meant to be closed. When you growling out a grumpy, you are pushing it open so that the shit can come out. Okay, so when you having sex in your anus, which is meant to be closed, you are living life in reverse. And everybody ain't with that. Everybody can't get jiggy with it. And there can be pain. There can be discomfort. No matter how much lose, how much relaxation, the first time you poop in reverse, it's gonna hurt a little bit. Like it just, <laughs> it is. But as we mature and as we get into the groove of things and learn and go from a novice to a veteran, you learn the tricks of the trade and you listen to those before you that figured out the bullshit so that you can have a good time. We all need somebody to walk so that we can run, so that we can fly. So thank you, Fortis, for speaking on that because I tried anal and I did not make it. <laughs> and I tried it, guys, three times. And it was not, th- that's it. It's my bird, Adrian. Adrian booty don't like anal. And that's just my booty. Some of y'all booties love it. And I love it for your booties. But all I'm saying is, that shit hurt. <laughs> well, I'll let Granddaddy Horror step, um, step into this one. So I have Granddaddy Horror. I would hey, say, I, I agree, I agree. Uh, there should like whenever it comes to anal play, yes, all the lube people, all the lube people who do not use lube for anal sex. You're sadists. Like I was gonna do, continue to do what works for you. Man, I love to that. And if, it's fit, if not lube, but y'all not continue lube. to do whatever works for y'all. Any water, take care of yourself. That'll be the main lube right there. <laughs> you want to all that? Like, take care of yourself. 
like when it comes to engaging in anal sex, it, it is important to be comfortable. It is important right. to um, ensure man. that the people that you're engaging with is just as patient as you are, mm -hmm. because um, you don't want to experience anal tearing because that is something. That is something that can bring it's infection, lead to infection, bad smells, horrible. Bad it's, smell. you know, it's, all all it's a lot that happens with that. So definitely make sure the person that you're engaging with um, again, utilizing you as a loop, they're patient, that um, you all communicate with each other. If it does seem to be a little bit pay, uh, painful, let them know so that they can, um, you know, be a lot slower, that they can slow down. Don't be afraid, okay? Um, but, you know, it's to vaginal play. Don't just put be out here putting your dick in, in the hole. No, that's not. Mm -mm. Make sure you take your time. Make sure that there's um, patience. Make sure there's lubricant. Um, yes, the vagina is just lubricating, but that also does not mean that you should not have um, lube. So definitely in include lube in your sexual experiences, people. It is very important. It is needed. So, um, oh. No, I was just going to say, uh, and just to, uh, you know, echo a little bit what Adrian was saying is that, um, you know, just speaking up for all of my side sexual people out there is you do not let people just like how we're talking about virginity shaming. Please do not let people sexually shame you, yes. you know, or take that or take or take that to heart. If you do not enjoy something, you do not need you do not need to engage in it. And that's okay. And, that, and, and, and even if you are somebody like me, like I in my first, you know, kind of um, intimate experience, I was penetrated. I have tried, you know, the nature of penetrating. I can do it sometimes or whatever. That's a little bit too much about me. But it's, <laughs> it's one of those things that I had to learn that this is not necessarily I will I can do it every once in a blue moon. But it's not my go-to for sexual satisfaction. And so mm -hmm. having to learn about, okay, well, what are the things that I do like and I do enjoy? And relish in, relish in that. You know, so do not feel that just because um, you are heterosexual that you are same gender loving or, you know, whatever, whoever it is that you identify as, that you, because of the fact that this is the stigma of, you know, the culture that you have to enjoy, you know, enjoy this particular kind of sex or intimacy. You enjoy what you enjoy and just please do do not take to heart about being sexually shamed about being sexually shamed. Side note, a new player has <laughs> she done fucked up, y'all. She in the same <laughs> room as oh Alex. The camera's pointing on there. Put you on like yeah. reminding Sharita's here. <laughs> <laughs> in the team, you got to be in. Even better IRL. <laughs> this is where we are, people. All right, I'm emotional. I'm not. We're talking about virginity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and don't mind me, I'm going to just be coming in and out. All right. So I'm going to be around. All right. All right, All right Warren. <laughs> All right. Good. Um, what is something that you will tell your younger self regarding losing your virginity? I don't know who wants to start off first in that. Hi, hey, Adrian. It's Adrian. Um, girl, let that shit go. Okay, you are not a whore because it felt good. You, you are not any less thing. You still going wherever you going when you die. I still have figured out where that is. <laughs> but you, you, God does not love you any less because it felt good when someone touched your nose. Okay, baby, like you have to be good. Proud of you for being safe. I'm glad you made it through. And you finna kill these hoes. Okay, it's all okay. right. It is okay. You're okay. That's what I would tell Adrian. All right, who else want to go next? I guess I could go next. Okay. Um, so I would say that, um, wait, please. Well, what are we going to tell you yourself? Yeah, so it was, it's never going to be perfect. I know, like, society puts this huge emphasis on females and losing their virginity, and it has to be this really big thing, and it has to be someone you're in a relationship with and all of that stuff but it it's okay if that's not what happens it's okay that that's not your story and 
it is not as big of a deal as people make it, right? Did you have fun? More of it is, was it consensual? Did you have fun? Were you safe? Don't feel shamed because it wasn't this picture perfect story that you saw on like Love and Basketball or <laughs> from where, you know, as a teenager, don't, don't feel bad because it wasn't the situation where you know, you were a teenager, but you were older than like some typical people lose their virginity. It was an experience and you learned from it and you learned about what you liked and definitely what you don't like. And it's okay. That's what they say in this room. Yeah. Um, well, well, I can say something real quick. Well, I would tell my younger Warren to not feel pressure, you know, to not feel pressure because of society or feel pressure because of somebody that you in a personal space with, you know, don't feel like you got to have it a certain way or a certain sex, you know, it ain't got to be a specific sex. You know, you want it to be your consent. You want to be you want to do it because it's true to who you are. You will have room to do it better. You will have room to start it over again. But you just want to stay true to yourself when you, when you are giving yourself to somebody. And I would tell myself, don't feel pressure. Just don't feel ashamed of how you do it either. Or don't feel like you gotta act a certain way. You know, so I would definitely tell myself that. And you ain't got nothing to lose. You ain't got nothing to rush for, baby. You got the rest of the world, rest forever to do it. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you could have found out, you could do it over and over again too. So, hey, you know what I'm saying? I would tell you, I would tell you. Uh, I, but what I would know <laughs> is I don't have that man child around me, so you cannot prove I'm out here fucking. So you live in that loophole. I surely do. Because I'm purple than bitch. Oh, so you still my 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 my, my spank from the sperm? Man. My spam. Mm. Gave it up with me. Oh hi. Oh, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop uh, but uh, what I would tell younger Vernon about using his take your time. Always remember that your choice matters, that consent is always important. And make sure that you're comfortable. Make sure that the person that you engage with truly trusts, uh, that you trust them. Um, make sure that you practice everything that is related to being safe. If that means being in a safe location, ensuring that there's a condom, ensuring that there's um, uh, someone who knows exactly where you are, um, be truthful to yourself and love on yourself and make sure that you enjoy your experience and um, be kind to yourself regardless of the outcome. Um, it's about you loving you and loving the things that you do. Um, that's what I would tell young bird. Fortis, what you gonna sell young Fortis now? I would tell myself, my younger self, that love myself for all my imperfections and embrace all who I am at this very moment and in the past. Also be free to be who I am and express it wholeheartedly. Don't rely on other people's thoughts or words or emotions. Just be who I am and just thrive for the best. That's what I would tell myself and also love myself unconditionally instead of conditionally. And don't let anybody's impression dictate my life or my destiny. Amy. I would tell my 14 year old self, I wish you will remember your wet dreams because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Like, I've been asked the question, like, because of the fact that, like, I didn't engage in self pleasure until I got to college. People will ask me, so what? You don't remember having, like, wet dreams? And I honestly don't remember. Wow. No, I really don't. I, so when I answer that, I can't say yes, I can't say no, because honestly, I just really don't remember. So I was about 14 years. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So it's, I really tell people, I really just don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I really just don't know. So I can't say if I did or if I did. Like, I remember. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So yeah, I would definitely tell my 14 year old self, like, remember your wet dreams. Like, you know, they could they could be good for you. <laughs> I, oh, I remember being best spot in the bed a lot when I was six and seven and eight. Yeah, I'm yeah, waiting on my dream. Like, you know, like, yeah, some of you left. 
I know that was that got wild and loud, but I will say uh, for myself, uh, yeah, I definitely remember a lot of my wet dreams and those things. <laughs> like, like I know there was one when I was uh, like much younger, where the person I was engaging with had two dicks, and I was like, I was, "Wow, I wonder how that would be in real life my experience." So you've always been a little switch. I always get a hoe. You've been, you've been equal opportunity loving like me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you get uh, mature, you become just have hard dreams. Hard, hard. You wake up just hard. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Don't be okay. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> I'm good in the morning. Hey, hey. Say, like, other than that, like, what dreams they like? If I if I would have known back then um, to like just write those like in the journal, I should have. I should have. I, I know. I I I remember only like four of mine, but I know I have plenty. I, I like sometimes they included like friends from high school. I told one of those friends uh, about that dream um, during high school because I had a crush on them. And I was like, it was a three way and it was two dudes and a chick. And yeah, it was, I was one of the dudes, of course. Uh, and it was, it was good. It was good. <sighs> okay, anyways, enough about Vernon and his wet dreams. <clears throat> so I'm going to skip one of these questions and um, go to this last topic. The importance of not equating your virginity with your self-worth. Mm -hmm. How do we all feel about that? Who wants to go first? So I guess me again. Um, being, so again, I have lived all over the world, uh, but I've noticed that in the Bible built, <laughs> if you have your virginity, you're better than all of these sinners out here. And that's fucking bullshit. That's <laughs> not true at all. Whether you have your virginity or not, it does not dictate who you are. You are no less good or bad because your hymen is intact or your dick has never been inside a woman. You ain't got no mommy muscle. All right, that, that has, they literally do not equate to anything. Uh, they have nothing to do with each other. Honestly, to me, virginity is just, a rite of passage, you know? It's not, you You shouldn't dictate like, oh, I'm not attractive or, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm probably gonna be bad at sex because I still have my virginity or, ooh, I'm better than you, I'm pure. I'm wanted, I'm a hot commodity to hang. I ain't like y'all out here fucking like, no. Virginity has nothing to do with your self-worth, nothing at all. Mm -hmm. I will say, uh, and I know we're moving away from that, but I mean, if your virginity was taken traumatically, that is a different story. Again, it still doesn't have anything to do with your self-worth. However, I can understand how your self-worth can be skewed because it was taken instead of you giving it. Um, but outside of trauma, your virginity has nothing to do with who you are as a person. You are no less, you're no better, you're no worse, you're no smarter, you're no dumber, you're no hungrier, you're no fool. You, it, it, It's just another thing about you. You, the importance around virginity is exactly that, whatever you want it to be, whatever level it is to you. Um, so write that story yourself, but do not tie your self-worth to whether or not you have or do not have your virginity. Mm. Anybody else got anything that they would like to add on to that? Um, I want to just pick it out off of something. So this idea of virginity is just like, it's nonsense really. But even when you think about like having a hymen for females, a lot of people lose their hymen even before Bridget, they actually have sex. Mm -hmm. I lost my hymen riding horses, right? So it's like, that is that is not equate to anything mm -hmm. in general. So just kind of piggybacking off of what you were saying. Yeah, for sure. And now um, to add like the another reason why the virginity conversation is idiotic is because there's no male equivalent of breaking one time. No. Nope. So it's no way of like, it, it doesn't make sense. Because y'all started that in puberty. Like, yeah, so if you say never having an orgasm makes you a virgin, well, all of y'all in four, between 12 and 14 are not virgins now. <laughs> yeah, we came out of that. We ain't been virgins since a long, long time. Bro. 
Mm -hmm. Like, so it's like no need to have that pressure of purity on anybody, or the, even the idea of modesty mm -hmm. in that sense. Like, just because someone's out here fucking, let them fuck. If, yeah. if it's not for you, it's just never going to be for you. But it doesn't, like Adrian was saying, it doesn't make you better than the other person. Mm -hmm. Now, if you feel as though you um, being reserved and not having sex makes you feel more superior than somebody, you need to check yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, what is it about however somebody chooses to engage in their life makes gives value to you? Mm -hmm. Like, how is it that another person's actions add to your value? And how does that depreciate your like it doesn't make any kind of sense like your self-worth is your self-worth only you can provide that value of yourself onto yourself no one else can do that regardless of how many what your body count is or if you uh, engage in sex at a younger age versus a, at an older age none of that in the grand scheme of things really matter is about the choice that you make for yourself and the choice that you continue to make after that. Um, and that's pretty much all I have to say on that issue. Yeah, I agree. And I um, I just wanted to piggyback off of that. If I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, body cow, body cow, body cow, because like I want to be safe. But if the argument is you want to be safe as far as STIs, then get tested with the person that you're about to have sex yeah, with. Exactly. Um, but if the argument is just, okay, well, you slept with 30 people, that means you had sex, that means you have something. So then you need to sit back with your stigmas and your biases where it comes to sex. Back. Um, and STIs. Mm -hmm. so. it, yeah, because you get stuff for just one person. It don't exactly. matter how many people you with. It could be that one person when you're settling down that can give you something that you've never had your whole life being promiscuous. So that stuff, those mm -hmm. stif stigmas that they be having, that stuff is false. You can have a partner and be clean as a whistle. And be clean as a whistle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, be, actually, the word clean is stigmatizing you for uh, well, okay, but you To can, be not, there will be no STIs present in your life. Yeah, you don't have to have no STD. It's all about anything. responsibility. If you're doing what you need to do to ensure the safety of you and the people you're engaging in sex with, it doesn't matter how many people you're engaging with. Yeah. Me personally, I get tested before and after every partner. So I know who's ass to beat. <laughs> Just me. But yeah, it's a good practice. And then your mouth, you kiss, you kiss, you don't kiss everything pure all day, but you got to kiss your husband and your wife that, you know, you, you might kiss something that was a little dirty, you got to wash your mouth out. And we have plenty of episodes that go into how STIs can be dormant and all these other things like that. But that is the main argument I hear the most about that. And to realize, regardless if you do have an STI or not, like you are told, like that doesn't depict yourself. No. <laughs> but even outside of that it doesn't matter how many people you slept with it's all about if that's the fear that you have with it then do what you need to do to make sure that you're safe and your partner is safe mm -hmm. that like uh, when it comes to your health your personal health personal safety personal worth self-worth and all that it is the self it's the responsibility of the self yeah no one else can do anything for that like exactly. uh, if you feel as though somebody out here having multiple sex partners automatically will expose you to something then do not engage with them or educate yourself on how um there may be some ignorance present in you so that you can recognize that oh wait this person could be having sex with 18 people at the same time but they're wearing condoms with every single person that they're engaging with so how could they actually give me anything mm -hmm. you know just actually taking yourself outside of your own perspective to look into the literature or look into um the professionals the experts or even um doing your own journey of this information that's available on all these websites it's like it's out there <laughs> essentially mm -hmm. but yeah you should not be um valuing valuing your self-worth uh, on others' expectations, or even the idea of seeking uh, validity uh, from our validation from other people. So, with that That's being true. said, um, does any before I close this out, does anyone else have any last things that they, that they would like to share with the audience before I close this out? And it looks like that's a no. 
Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for coming on to the podcast. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, to the uh, audience out there, thank you all so much for listening to the Hope of Movie podcast where we step out and speak on sexuality. Just in case no one else told you this today, you are beautiful, you are worthy of happiness and joy, you are enough and then some. You may not live up to the expectations of others, but that is okay. You are only required to walk in your own shoes. May each day you live lead you towards abundance. With that said, love you all and see you next episode. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Holiloquy Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. You can subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcasting app and find us on the web at www.holiloquy.com. That's www.h-e-a-u-x-l-i-l-o-q-u-y.com. Share the podcast with your friends and join the conversation.